All right, uh, this problem is from section 2.5, number 5. It says solve the polynomial equation by factoring and then using the zero product principle. And our equation is 5x to the fourth equals 2560x. Now, first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the equation. So 5x to the fourth equals... 2560x. All right, and the next thing we're going to do is actually move the 2560x over to the left side of the equation, which this will leave us with 5x to the fourth minus 2560x equals zero. Now, because the degree of this equation is 4, that means that we're going to have four answers for our equation. If you notice that there's two answers up here, the 0 and the 8. However, that is incomplete because there are going to be four answers to this equation. Now, there's a 5 here, and this 2560 is divisible by 5. And there's also an x here and four x's here. So the first thing we're going to do is use the greatest common factor, which the greatest common factor of 5x to the fourth and 2560x is going to be 5x. And we're going to pull that out of these two terms. If we pull 5x out of 5x to the fourth, that leaves us with x to the third. And if we take 5x out of 2560x, we're going to be left with 500 12 and that equals 0. Now x cubed minus 512 is the difference of two cubes and we can think of it as a cubed minus b cubed. There is a uh, general rule for factoring the difference of two cubes. It's going to be a minus b and then in parentheses a squared plus a b plus b squared. The trick to the part that's in the second set of parentheses is that you have to write x cubed minus 512 as a sum of two cubes. Right now it's not written in that uh, the, sorry, the difference of two cubes right now, it's not written exactly like that because of this 512. So in order to write that as something to the third power, we have to take the cube root of 512, and the cube root of 512 is 8. So we're going to rewrite this equation like so, 5x, parentheses, x cubed minus 8 cubed, close the parentheses, equals 0. All right, next thing we're going to do is factor x cubed minus 8 cubed. Don't forget this 5x, so we'll leave that 5x. In parentheses, the first thing I'm going to write is x minus 8. Close the parentheses, and then I'm going to take a squared. So that's x squared plus a times b, x times 8, which is 8x, plus b squared, b is 8, so... 8 squared is 64. Close the parentheses, equals 0. Now, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. Two parts are going to be extremely simple. One part is going to require a little bit more work. So let's do that now. 5x equals 0. If 5x equals 0, then x, of course, has to be 0, and that's this 0 answer that we got up here. The next thing we're going to say is x minus 8 equals 0. If x minus 8 equals 0, we add 8 to both sides, we get x equals 8. Now, the last one, x squared plus 8x plus 64 equals 0, that one is a little bit tougher. If this was simple, we could factor this. However, there are no two numbers that add up to 64, that multiply together to get 64 and add up to 8. Therefore, we're going to have to use the quadratic equation. And the quadratic equation looks like this x equals negative b 
plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's go ahead and substitute. a is 1, b is 8, and c is 64. So this says negative b, so we're going to write negative 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 8 squared minus 4 times a is 1, c is 64, divided by 2 times 1. All right, and let's simplify that a little bit. So x equals negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus, all right, uh, 64 times 4 is 256 divided by 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, and simplify it a little bit further, negative 8 plus or minus the square root. Okay, 64 minus 256 is 192, and we divide that by 2. All right, and we still have to simplify a little further. This is actually a negative 192. So x equals negative 8 plus or minus. Now, being that there is a negative inside the radical, we know we are going to have an i. All right, so in order to pull out the i, I'm going to take out a square root of negative 1. Now, th that's going to leave us with this 192. All right, now, for the 192, let's just go ahead and write that. We need to simplify this radical. In order to simplify the radical, we have to find the biggest perfect square that goes into 192 evenly. And that is actually going to be 64. And 64 goes into 192 three times divided by 2. And whatever we can take out of the radical, we're going to do that now. And anything that has to stay in that can't be simplified, we're going to leave it in. So we're going to get x equals, still have this negative 8, plus or minus. Now, um, I'm going to take out the radical 64 first. So radical 64 is 8. The square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 3 can't come out, so that has to stay in. All of this is divided by 2. And our final step is to divide everything by 2. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, plus or minus. 8i divided by 2 is 4i, radical 3. So this is actually two answers. One answer is negative 4 plus 4i radical 3. The other answer is negative 4 minus 4i radical 3. And we couple that with the two answers that we got up here, the 0 and the 8. So your answer is a 0, 8. And the negative 4 plus or minus 4i radical 3 so those are your four so those are your four